Is it true that we live in a post-Christian era? And if we do, what does that mean? According to best-selling author Lisa Cherry, it means that Christians must be equipped to take a stand against the dark flood headed to America. Welcome to The Harvest Show, Lisa. So good to be here. Okay, so right out the gate, what yes. flood are we talking about that's headed to America? Well, the flood that I believe all of us can sense is already here. Mm -hmm. That's the flood of confusion and lawlessness. Mm -hmm. It's the flood of sin, flood of perversion. The flood that's causing us as Christians to begin to say, what's going on here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How yeah. has this world changed so quickly? How do I get my bearing? Okay, so then to the person who's listening saying, wait mm -hmm. a minute, we've always had lawlessness. Mm -hmm. We can read in the book mm -hmm. of Corinthians where sure. Paul is really rebuking them and about the, some of the same things. So what's different this time? What's different this time, I think, is this happening in our midst. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is true that there have been times of gross darkness on the earth. And, and, you know, one of the questions we've debated in the body of Christ, is Jesus coming soon? Mm -hmm. Is that what this is about? Or right. is our nation shifting? And so we're living just maybe in a, in a shaking time or a falling time of our nation. And I think some of those questions have almost paralyzed us to a point where that's the thing we want to debate. Are mm -hmm. we still Christian? Uh, were we ever Christian? Uh, the bigger question would be, how do we respond when the world around us is certainly pushing toward the edge and when mm -hmm. we see it happening with our children's lives. And that's mm -hmm. what really stirred me up to ask those questions as we've traveled and spoken to a lot of families. Mm -hmm. It's not like this dark flood is just happening out in Hollywood or right. in Washington or someplace else. It's pushing against our homes. And we see very clearly that our young generation is changing very quickly in their ideas mm -hmm. and, and what they view of God. Now, what have you experienced personally that's kind of... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, drawn you in this direction to, mm -hmm. to be a, a mouthpiece, a, a megaphone to you know, sound these alarms and to declare, you know, we better think about what's going on and, and make some changes. Well, I think the biggest thing that influenced me is I was deceived as a young woman. Uh, I bought in to my generation's darkness and began to move and I melded it with my faith. You see, mm -hmm. what's going on in the world cannot be surprising. Right. Anyone who's apart from Jesus is going to move toward everything that's in the Old Testament that the law reveals will be there. So that can't shock us. But what happened to me is I got sucked in to changing what the Bible said, hmm. to changing the foundations that my grandfather and my great-grandfather had preached the Word of God. Hmm. And that deeply impacted my life. I moved way far. And if, if it not been for the intervention of God in my life, I would be walking where many people now would say would be in full deception. Now, you that were, sobered me. You were in the process of getting a, an MDiv, a Master of Divinity. Yes, I was. As this was mm -hmm. happening. Yes, yes. And so you were actually, uh, your, uh, I don't want to, dilution of, of the Word of God or traditional. Revision. Was, we revised was, That was it. happening, though, through other respected people or people that you respected. They were teachers, professors, other ministers. So it's really kind of, this is deep in the church, isn't it? It actually is, is, is so deep. And, and until I lived it, I don't think we can understand that you can love Jesus, but be sincerely deceived. Mm -hmm. And you can progress, see the word progressivism, which we talk about progressive in the, in, the, in the sense of political or government, but progressive Christianity mm -hmm. is, means that we're moving we're, we're saying this Bible is true, sure, we believe it, but it needs to be updated for mm -hmm. our generation. And, and that's where I made a lot of serious turns. No longer was there a hell because we kind of voted that out in my group. You know? mm -hmm. we, we didn't talk about sin. We, we wanted love to rule. And, of course, that is the heart of God. But he's, he's both holy mm -hmm. and loving. Okay, so, but mm -hmm. you had the Bible going into this. You, you, yes. you knew the Bible was the Word of God. So... What is it that changed you? How did you come, have that come to Jesus moment? What really impacted you then to change your mind about what you already had studied? One encounter with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was supernatural. I have to tell you, I can't explain it except okay. that when God breaks through in our life, this is a spiritual battle. See, the flood we're talking about is not just about policies. It's not about laws. It's a spiritual force. And it has a great power to deceive. But this is the beautiful side of the flood. You know, when the enemy comes in like a flood, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the spirit of the Lord God raises up a standard against it. And, and, you know, in my life, he raised that standard up. He, he showed me his truth. And I have to say, I changed overnight. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just a liberal feminist, revisionist, 
you know, very, very uh, loose in my understanding of how we could change God's word mm -hmm. to overnight. It was like the scales fell off my eyes. Mm -hmm. So I know that what we're up against is spirit. Mm -hmm. This is not about uh, a battle for the presidency. This is about what's happening down the spiritual level. And we must prepare our lives to understand that lest we could fall into places of deception. I'm glad you said that because I think that sometimes I have watched Christians feel like all hope is lost. All hope right. is gone right. when their candidate doesn't get elected into a particular office. We have that coming up now. We have Christians mm -hmm. who feel like, you know, I mean, we definitely should take a stand. Absolutely. But kind of address that issue that no matter what happens come November, what can Christians do? We, we do still have a voice. We have a voice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, God is looking for us to be the standard. Okay. I love that scripture, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. But if you take that through the lens of the New Testament, who's the standard? We are, because Jesus is in us. So this isn't the time for fear. This isn't the time for backing up. And I love the story you shared about the courageous man. Uh, you know, maybe he didn't know what he was going to encounter when he wrote his beliefs on Facebook. But, you know, we hear those stories as believers, and something inside of us is beginning to ask, and I, I hear this from many people, will I have that courage? Mm -hmm. And I believe God is pouring out persecution-resistant faith mm -hmm. to American Christians right now. I love how you guys uh, show us what's going on in the Middle East, because the, the scenes over there have gripped my heart right. and uh, have caused me to ask some deeper questions. God. Could I stand out there like the scene of, uh, mm -hmm. of the ISIS, you know, the men that were in the orange suits? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and could I say, Jesus, I love you. I, I would die for you. And I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. that, that causes me to ask deeper questions. God, right. can I face that? And I believe the Holy Spirit is putting some kind of a maturing kind of faith. He's pouring out his power to those who are listening mm -hmm. right now. I'm sure as uh, you... I would say converted, <laughs> but, but recommitted back to yes. a, 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 I don't know how this might be a, a bad word these days, but a fundamental understanding yes. and agreement and uh, uh, leaning upon the original intent mm -hmm. of the scriptures as opposed to revisionist and the Bible being a living document like, you know, our constitution may or may not be. Uh, did you encounter then a pushback from those around you and the oh world my. around you? And, and then yes. how, did you, how did you handle that? What, what was it that allowed you to keep, continue pushing through? Well, immediately, the love of God also flooded into my life. And that's where we need to recognize we're not talking about getting angry at people. I turned and wanted to share the good news of the gospel to my friends, but some left. You know, some looked at me as, as being, now I was deceived in their eyes <laughs> because mm -hmm. I had fallen away. Right. Um, and so my whole world changed. Uh, I, I realized that that is what Jesus said when I came to the earth. Yeah. I didn't come to make everybody happy and yeah. live a coexist life. I mm -hmm. came and I brought division because his word divides. Mm -hmm. And yet, um, I, I would never, ever want to go back because I found my Savior mm -hmm. in the fullness of who he really is. Mm -hmm. So Lisa, I want you to ponder this question mm -hmm. as we go to break. Why is it that we cannot peacefully coexist mm -hmm. with the differences of opinions or fundamental truths uh, that each side holds? That with Lisa Cherry when we return in a moment.